Thanks for joining me today, you guys. I'll get started in a couple minutes. Um, before I get started, I have to scrape the paint out from under my fingernails so I don't get uh, cyber bullied by anyone who says, oh, she has dirty nails, right? Proud America. <laughs> that joke was for you. No, oh, Proud America wants my nails nice and clean. I can't have any paint under them. Hey, I'm a working girl. Darn it. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have nicey, nicey fingernails. Although, I was thinking about getting a kit and trying to Keep some color on them. Okay. All right. Well, I'm still kind of dyed a little orange. And then she'll, she'll blame that on cigarette smoking next. When actually I was making beads with alcohol inks. <laughs> Oh, I'm just teasing proud America. She's okay. So I'm going to get started here. I have a new mouse. This, uh, this piece of crap from China called Azor. It's wireless. This has a nano receptor. I thought uh, I thought Aaron might be interested in the nano receptor deal, but you know it it rattled when I shook it. The nano receptor was was in here in storage, and I took it out. And I plugged it in and. There was a rattle and a little piece, a little um, like piece of broken off plastic fell out. And now when I use the color, you know, the color thing, um, my mouse goes all over my screen like crazy. I mean, it's just, it's not controllable. It looks like um, someone else is controlling my mouse. So I thought I would just do this little review on this mouse I'm going to send back tomorrow. Come on, get get stuck on on. And then when you try and, and flip the switch, your finger over here hits the button. Everything opens up. And I, I got to get that, that light off because my mouse is just crazy. Oh, Jesus, it it's um got a charger that did not reach my my PC because my PC is about oh let me get my tape measure no I'll just guess it's probably um four and a half feet away from me and I can't reach the USB ports on it very easy so I have a, a hub connected that's um a little bit closer so I have the uh, the nano receptor plugged into the hub, and then I also have the charger plugged into the hub. So um, maybe it's the hub that the that the uh, nano receptor don't like. Maybe it wants to be right in the PC itself. I'm not sure. I guess I'll try it in the PC, but I mean, being four feet away. I'm not going to be able to pick up the reception anyways. So this is probably going to go back to Amazon. And uh, they'll throw it in their bin. And somebody will get it in a box of uh, wholesale junk that was sent back. And probably resell it on eBay. <laughs> hey, proud. <laughs> Um, hi, proud. I cleaned my fingernails for you. I thought you would like that. 
So anyways, um, let's, uh, let's get on here. This mouse is just, um, this is it. I'm not turning the lights on on it because then I, it's, forget it. I don't want to deal with it. So this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to make this little barrel knot, but I'm going to put a buffalo head button on the end of this, and I am going to use this as an extension on this bracelet because this bracelet's just a little bit too small for me and i, I kind of think i want to keep this one and i'm going to keep it for a display and what i like about it is that we've got even even looking get in the cam um spaces between the knots on each side of the the nickel See, that's, it's kind of evened out that way, and I like that. Um, so I'm going to try and duplicate these loops, these here loops, on an extension with another nickel that I can just button in to extend the size of this bracelet. So, And I thought, you know, it would be a good chance to um, talk about kits that I'm putting together to make this stuff um, compared to what I paid for everything to make this jewelry, um, this one bracelet. So if anybody's interested in making these, you can see a cost comparison. You can see where I got the supplies from, how much they cost me, and how much I'm selling my kits for. I'm just going to average out um, what it costs to buy the material, um, probably just add a little bit more onto, um, the labor I put into it. And then I'm going to sell, you know, just what you need to make bracelets. So you'll be able to buy them rather cheap. And then you'll can, you can see what I charge for these, um, bracelets. So what the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure that my button's going to go through the loops and fit good. It's actually going to go through this loop over here. And then I'll have the ex, uh, an extension with another button. Unless, yeah, see, I have to have another button to go into this loop. So it's going to fit on there. This extension is actually going to look like, like this when it's done. So I had a piece of scrap here and I'm going to take it apart. I just want to make sure that this was a long enough piece of scrap. It takes four and a half inches of leather cord to make this barrel knot. And I'm using um, two millimeter leather cord. You know, leather cord comes in different sizes. So I'm going to take this knot apart, actually. See, and it's just like, it's basically like, um, it's a, like kind of like a slip knot. Um, a hangman's noose, you know, it's, you can make them, it slides it there, but I'm going to put some glue on there to hold it in place. I have got this kind of glue that's made for jewelry. This glue has a little hyper, um, hypodermic needle in it, like kind of where you can get in and put jewelry in a precise spot, right where you want it. I don't endorse any of these products. I don't work for these companies. These are just some of the supplies that I use. And I'm just sharing with you what I use. The companies do not pay me any incentive or, or anything like that. No, I'm not an affiliate. So 
This piece of scrap that I have, I'm going to measure it for you and show you what it is. Um, actually, I can tell you right now it's 12 inches because this is a 12 by 12 piece of tag board. So let me just get my ruler to confirm that. Okay, 12 by 12. Now, later on in some of the videos that I'm going to do where um, I make these jewelries, I will cut a notch out of here and hook this around the notch. So I have a, a sort of like a board to work with. Um, otherwise, I have a macrame board, but it's kind of thick. So when you go around the notch, your loop turns out way too big for, for these um, button shanks. Now, this is a, a regular like button. It's called a shank button. Um, it has a loop on the other side. That's called a shank button. And you can find them uh, wherever fabrics or, or things are sold. You don't have to necessarily buy them in from the jewelry department where the price could be even, you know, like jacked up compared. Check your prices. So we're going to um, make an extension for that. This is 12 inches, 12 inches long. And I've got a braiding needle that I use. I'll slip it on the end after I've got it wrapped up. Um, maybe I'll just do that now because it's really hard to get on after. No, I'll do it later. So um, some people, I know there's a video out by uh, Kelly's Beatery, I think. Um, I think she's in Minnesota. Uh, she has a walk-in location, a brick and mortar shop where she sells beads and jewelry and kits and you name it. And she's, um, she's a wonderful tutorer. Um, I've got a lot of ideas from her and um, with her, she uses um, a little tube when she makes this barrel knot. I don't have a tube and I thought maybe I could use a straw or something like that. And I think maybe a straw would work, you know, if it's a, if it's a skinny straw, but I didn't, um, I didn't start making them that way. I've started making mine with a braiding needle. And this is a two prong braiding needle. It's a um, split. Let me see if I can get that in the camera. It's split on the end. It opens up and I can't get my cam to focus. It opens up and there's a couple of tiny little teeth. Let's see if I can. Hey, focus. <laughs> no, it's going to not focus. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so this opens up on the end, see? And there's two tiny little prongs. And those are what kind of stick into the leather to hold it. Another needle is the... Um, it's a needle where you screw the end of the leather into um, the needle. It's like a little tiny tube and there's threads in it. And when you screw your leather cord in there, they kind of form around the threads. And that's supposed to help um, hold that leather cord in. And I've never had luck with those needles. Um, I've always had better luck with two prong needles. So that's what I use. And then they're, they're called two prong needles. If you buy them from a leather shop, these are braiding needles. So then I, when I pinch my cord in there, I just give a real light pinch until I feel those, those prongs stick down in the leather. Now I'm going to take this piece of leather from the other end. This is called the standing end. And I'm just going to fold around a little loop. And I'm going to put my, actually, let me put the shank, let me put the button on first. That's the whole idea of this. All right, we've got the button on the cord. This is two millimeter cord that I'm using. All right, I'm just going to pinch that down a little. And... 
I'm going to kind of compare it with my other knot there. This is the end that I'm going to be cutting off. So then I'm going to come around with this, this working end. This is the standing end. This is called the working end. And I'm going to make another loop. And you're going to kind of have to be tricky with your fingers because you're going to have to hold a lot of these this down with your fingers. I think I'm going to need a little bit more room on that standing side, All right? So now if I pinch this in the middle between these, this bow tie here, this it's like I made a bow tie of loops okay i'm going to pinch my finger down and that'll kind of be uh, where i'm going to tie the knot in between those loops see so i'm just going to wrap it around here but i want to make sure that these loops are relatively the same size as these other loops so I'm going to kind of put it side by side and try and get a little comparison. And I think this side needs to be just a little bit bigger. So you're going to have to fiddle with it a little bit. You know how to fiddle? Okay. Now. I'm going to start wrapping around and I'm, and I'm going to wrap towards my other hand, towards where I'm holding this leather cord. I'm going to wrap it around four times and then I'm going to pinch this right here, pinch the knot to hold it. I'm just going to double check one last time to make sure my loops look even. See, I want them all even. And they look pretty good, I guess. Um, could be slid down maybe just a little bit. I'm gonna try and work that down just a little and take and retighten it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to retighten it because it kinda came loose and kinda push them around and retighten those. Kind of tricky to hang on to them sometimes. But there, now my loops look a little even now. Then I'm going to, I wrapped around there four times, then I'm going to come up and go through. I don't have enough leather here to reach. So I'm going to have to work this there. All right. Now I can straighten out my leather. Okay, so that needle is, let me turn on a light. Maybe you'll see it better. I know my, my webcam gets blurry sometimes. Well, let's try that. I don't know if you can see that my needle is going to go up through where I wound around. And then I'm going to pull that needle right through. You can see it sticking out of there now. But um, it's kind of hard on your fingers. So I'm going to take a hold of the pliers and pull it right through. Kind of wiggle it a little. Wiggle it. Just try and work it through there. It's tight. There. And it slipped right off. But I got it through there. And then you have to play with them a little bit to tighten them up. I had to loosen them a little bit before I went in there. Yeah, if you just pull on these... Um, loop ends, the knot will tighten. 
You want a nice and tight knot so the button head don't slip out. Just tighten it up nice. Like that. Now I'm going to slip a little dot of glue after I make sure that my loops are even. Let's compare. I'm going to cut that standing end off and see, look at that. They're pretty much even. Just so this button fits over. Put it on upside down. So I have to put it on the other side so both uh, buffaloes are right side up. There. So then we'll put that one through. And then we'll put this buffalo nickel through. And there's our extension. Then I can wear it. So this will be a good um, piece for me to keep on display for a demo on making extensions for your jewelry. And I decided to keep this bracelet for that purpose. All right. Now I'm going to take this um, glue. see it's like a hypo I always clean the tip off when I um, before I use it because what's on the tip is gooky hold on a second you guys there's always a bead on the end of this there we go all right you see that's a little Hypo needle. And uh, just drop a couple drops of glue down inside there. This glue dries clear. So I don't mind using it. It's made for jewelry. You gotta make sure some is coming out. It's thick. Just drop it down in there. You know, just don't overdo it on the glue. We're going to cut this end off. You know, the standing end. We're going to cut those off. I'm going to put the glue on both sides of the knot. You can't see it. Get down in there. And just glue it nice. There, that should be enough. I'm going to close this glue up right away. The cap has a little needle that goes in. Very hard to see. Kind of hard to get it in there. If you're shaking, forget it. Okay, now, come on. I'll probably spend as much time trying to get the needle inside that hole as I made this whole video. Uh, come on. Well, come on. There. Got her in there. Now I'm going to let this glue dry and set up. Um, but I'm going to take, I have a, a pink clippers. And I'm just going to clip off these, these standing ends. You can see right there. Just clip them off. And if you have a brown marker or brown paint, you can paint the end 
so you don't see those cut off ends down inside there. You see it uh, just a little light piece in there. So there, I have my extension done, and it was that easy. And now I can wear this bracelet. This bracelet was made a little bit too small for me. Um, because I didn't plan on keeping it. And then there it is, done. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now I can just um, button this in real easy, and that's what it looks like. Wait, I just shrunk. <clears throat> so this mouse has a mind of its own. There. Um, I just um, shrunk my screen there. But turning it around, this is what it looks like. You know, and you can make these longer. Um, before you make a bracelet, you have to measure around your wrist. And it's best to take a soft tape measure and just measure it around. My wrist is just uh, just about six and a half, maybe just a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah, just about six and three quarters. So um, when you make these, you have to know what size wrist you are going to make this for. And you have, you just cannot make a bracelet six and three quarter inches long. Let's see how long this piece is. From about the middle of the button to, and it was a little loose. But this bracelet's nine inches long. So if I would have made this bracelet six and three quarters long, it would have never fit me because of the thickness of the beads and the knots. So you have a thicker area going around. It's going to stand out further away from your skin. And that's what's going to um, shrink your bracelet for you. You have to accommodate for the thickness of all the, the beads and the knots and stuff you have in your bracelet. And when it sticks out further away from you, it means it's going to be larger going around the circumference. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let me go and see chat. Welcome to chat, everybody. Proud America, Connie. Kimberly, Patriot Kitty, welcome everybody today. I hope you're having a great day. I thought I would just explain um, a little bit more about these um, pieces of jewelry that I'm making and um, um, show you guys how easy it is to make a barrel knot. And Oh, the only thing is, I think I wrapped around four times for that extension. Oh, here's the extension. Oh, it looks even because when it's on, see, this is part of my obsessive compulsive problem. I was looking and I thought the knots were not the same, but they are. It, it, it There is something symmetrical about it. 
these two knots both have been wrapped around four and the one in the center here was three. So, okay, that's cool. If I would have just wrapped it around three times, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have made me happy. <laughs> See, that's, you know, part of or my organization. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, Uh, what we're going to do is offer these bracelets in a kit for you to make. So um, on top of painting things that look like they don't make sense <laughs> and uh, paint pouring, abstract, some of these sculptures and things that we make. And the wood products, um, we have a, a whole bunch of a wide range of um, barn board knickknack shelves and things to hang on the wall, wall hangings and stuff. We wanted to offer a line of jewelry and I've been making jewelry since I was a um, teenager when I started to learn how to macrame. So um, tying knots have been something about me my whole life. <clears throat> I guess that's why that specialty group comes to me and asks me, can you make me a whip? Can you make a whip? Yeah, I can make a whip. I can tie any knot you want. So, but the barrel knot is a good knot. And another thing to do is um, look up YouTube on some of the videos uh, for um, making paracord bracelets. They show a lot of illustrations of knots very, very good illustrations. Um, look up um, uh, braiding leather cord bracelets, knotting um, leather cord bracelets. Um, besides leather, look up paracord. And there's a lot of great YouTube videos out there that, that have a good camera, very, very good shot and go through each step explaining your unders, your overs, and um, where you got to go through. It's, it's really good to get into. When I make these bracelet kits, I'm going to have to uh, print that out. I'm going to have to take photos of each step and print them out and include a piece of paper uh, with these, unless you want a... I can make a better video on my phone, but the video instructions um, that'll come with this uh, will be done in a different kind of uh, video format other than my webcam. So I want, you know, I can do this on my phone, close-ups and step-by-step -step instructions, but I also want to include a paper copy in each kit of these um, bracelets. So that's about it today. Hope everyone's doing well. It's a beautiful day. Um, our temperature's really cooled off. It is awesome. It's a beautiful Sunday. And I couldn't feel any better. You know, every day I find something to be thankful for. And in the moment, in the moment, in that moment, you just got to look around you. Just got to look around. And it's usually, you know, the weather, the day, it's beautiful. The people around you are beautiful. And we still have so much to be thankful for. So I'm going to go right now. You guys have a blessed day. Be loved. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. Take care.